Okay, the first thing you need to know is when you're doing your taxes, the Internal Revenue Code recognizes capacities and not actualities. That means that when you're doing your taxes, you're doing it as a taxpayer, an individual taxpayer. Now, there are several capacities that you maintain. If you want a better understanding of this, just go back and think about the Laurel and Hardy's or the Andy Griffith show or the I Love Lucy show or even the Three Stooges. They demonstrated it to people time and time again. The Alvin and Costello or the Marx Brothers where the person, the skit is that the person goes to a hotel or goes to a bar or goes to some place and there's an individual who plays the bellhop. Then he plays the manager and all he does is he changes the hat. So the individual will put on a hat and he becomes one person, puts on another hat, becomes another person, puts on another hat and a badge, he becomes another person. These are capacities. So here are the several capacities, and it used to be on the old IRS forms. They used to have this section in parentheses, it would say self, and you would put your name as a dependent because you take care of yourself. So you were able to list yourself as a dependent. You can list yourself as a dependent. There is no law against it. I do it every time. I've been doing it since 1983 when I was 15 years old. I learned that from Mrs. Maxine Waters. So that is one dependent. Another dependent is you, the individual taxpayer. So that's two dependent. If you had a wife, that's three dependents because you and your wife. But you also have another dependent. So when you understand that you are also the head of your own household those are automatically three dependents okay they haven't been documenting that you will fill out the rest of the form exactly the way it's supposed to be you'll put in your social security number well what about the sole proprietorship you just need to know that this form is designed for sole proprietorships and hold on do you see how it lets you mark single it says check only one box that's a suggestion. It does not say you must only check one box. It says check only one box at a time. They don't fill in the rest. They just say check only one box. That is a suggestion. If you know about law, this is not a demand. A demand is shall, must. Those are demands. You must do this. You shall do that. But a suggestion you may do this they are not making this a demand check only one box so at a time is the rest of the sentence so you can check because if you couldn't check more than one box they would program this to where you couldn't check all of the boxes okay so that is a suggestion and if you don't believe me then by all means don't do it Okay, like I said, I've been doing this since I was 15. I've taken it to the Internal Revenue Service and asked them to tell me what's wrong. But the tax preparers, they don't get trained this way. They're trained to teach you to do it a certain way. Why? Because when you don't do that, that means the corporation, the IRS, or whoever is collecting the taxes, they retain more money and you get less money in a return. Here's the other thing, what I tell people. If the amount of taxes the government collects was the correct amount of taxes, then why do you get a refund every year? I mean, no, 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 if you're paying your taxes and they're asking for the correct amount every year, then why are you always getting a refund? A refund is because you are being reimbursed for the overpayment. So stop overpaying. All right, so. Those are your three dependents. Automatic for every single person. If a person has more dependents, I'm not here to walk you through all the different dependents for your filing of taxes. Not my job. My job is to give you the basics. That's the basics. The next thing you're going to understand when you file your taxes is the Schedule C. S-C-H. Schedule C. Give me one second. I have to answer this. Okay, here is the Schedule C. You're going to click on Schedule C. 
Now, these forms you can download from online. They are fill in the blanks, so use a PDF editor to fill them in. But let me show you why this is a Schedule C for a sole proprietorship. Okay, Schedule C's are for sole proprietorships. That's why you put your social security number. Remember, it's for a partnership. They're used uh, 1065, but for this says for business, sole proprietorship. You are a gig worker, sole proprietorship. You need to do the Schedule C because this lets you write off certain amounts. This lets you write off your deductions, your credits. That's what this form is for. Okay? Deductible meals. This lets you write off that investment, which you are probably doing as research and development. Mortgage paid to banks. People get to write off their interest, they don't even know it. Okay, other expenses. So this is how you get to write things off is the Schedule C as in Charlie. The next one. IRS tax topic 453, bad debt deductions. I am going to show this here. It's going to go to the IRS, the official website of the United States government. There you go, the IRS. This is bad debt deduction under IRS tax topic 453 if somebody owes you money and you can't collect apparently somebody owes you money the cryptocurrency person who ripped you off they owe you money you had an agreement you can prove this you have documentation if you don't you just create an affidavit and you can't collect and you did not intend to give it as a gift then pay attention generally you can deduct it okay now here's the thing, if you are a cash method taxpayer, you cannot do this as a regular taxpayer without using form 3115. That is notifying the IRS that you're changing your accounting practices. But businesses use the what's known as the accrual method. So if you are not a cash method taxpayer, and most individuals are tax, I mean cash method taxpayers, but if you are not a cash method taxpayer, you generally can take a bad de deduction for salaries, wages, rents, fees, interest, dividends, and similar items. So for businesses, if you are a sole proprietor, and that's why I'm suggesting you do it as a sole proprietor, you are a sole proprietor, you're going to use the accrual method, and you're going to, oh, I'm sorry, we got to do this because you have to see this. There is a box, and it's going to be right up here, accrual. This is what you're going to suggest right here for doing your taxes on this form. Here's the problem. When your tax preparer does it, they select that you're a cash method taxpayer. If you are a cash method taxpayer, pay, 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 pay attention. Then you get less and you don't get as much back on a return. And why tax preparers do that is beyond me. Because everybody should be an accrual method taxpayer. Accrual method is not solely for businesses. And that's why it's available there. Sorry, let's continue business bad debt generally sole proprietors right here sole proprietor generally and just remember generally he ain't got nothing to do with this so that means that it's suggestive generally that means it's broad that means that it's not specific but generally a business bad